Valley Church. Hope for those who have given up on church. Hi, I'm Lance Stoddart, and this is the App Group video for the week of Sunday, January 25th. And uh, I'm following up on Jerry's message from this weekend. It was uh, number four in our ProVision series, and it was entitled Endurance. And uh, Jerry spoke to us out of the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verses 1 through 6. And uh, he was talking specifically uh, about endurance, and he gave us three points uh, regarding our ability to endure. And uh, the first one was strip off the weight. And the idea there was taking care of things that hinder us from being able to move forward in God's plan for our lives and being able to run uh, towards God's plan. Secondly, uh, the second point, keep your eyes on Jesus. The third was to think about all that he endured, that he being Jesus, uh, in his sacrifice for us on the cross. Now, I'd like to continue right with that thought of endurance and I'd like to move just a little bit further forward in the book of Hebrews. It's the same chapter, actually, just a few verses that follow. And I want to talk to you specifically about enduring through discipline. And that, that's really where the writer of Hebrews goes after uh, he talks uh, about the points that, that Jerry addressed. And I just want to pick up right from there, and I want to talk to you about enduring discipline. And that's going to come from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 5 through 13. A little bit longer uh, passage of Scripture than, than, than I usually use for an app group, uh, but I'm going to read that with you. So if you would uh, find Hebrews chapter 12 uh, in your Bibles and then read along with me, I'm reading from the New International, I'm not New International, I'm sorry, New Living Translation. And Hebrews 12, 5 starts here, it says, And have you forgotten the encouraging words God spoke to you as his children? He said, My child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline, and don't give up when he corrects you. For the Lord disciplines those he loves, and he punishes those that he accepts as his child. Verse 7, as you endure this divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as his own children. Who ever heard of a child who was never disciplined by its father? If God doesn't discipline you as he does all of his children, it means that you are illegitimate and not really his children at all. Since we, are res since we respected our earthly fathers who disciplined us, shouldn't we submit even more to the discipline of the, f of the father of our spirits and live forever? For our earthly fathers disciplined us for a few years, doing the best they knew how. But God's discipline is always good for us so that we might share in his holiness. No discipline is enjoyable while it's happening. It's painful. But afterward, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained this way. So take a new grip with your tired hands and strengthen your weak knees. Mark out a straight path for your feet, so that those who are weak will and lame will not fall, but will become strong. Now, in verse 5, he says, Have you forgotten the encouraging words that God spoke to you as his children? He said, My child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline, and don't give up when he corrects you. Now, I, I think for us to understand this issue of enduring discipline, it's important to really understand what we're talking about here, what, what, what God is talking about in discipline. First of all, I want you to, to note that, that the writer of Hebrews here is actually quoting out of the book of Proverbs. He's quoting Proverbs chapter 3, verses 11 and 12. And uh, notice that he says something. He says this, the encouraging words that God spoke to you. Now, wait a minute. Discipline? Words of discipline are encouraging words? That's what the writer of Hebrews says. You see, we tend to think of discipline as being bad. We tend to think of discipline as being punitive or as being punishment. But, but not all discipline is that way. You see, the writer of Hebrews differentiates between discipline and correction. He says that in verse 5 makes a di distinction between the two. He also makes a dis distinction between discipline and punishment in verse 6. And you see, the truth is, and the, and the, writers of Hebrew, the writer of Hebrews uh, even acknowledges this, that all of us have experienced discipline. And in fact, either as children growing up or as parents with children, all of us have been a part of the disciplinary process. You see, as parents, we want our children to grow up and to be successful, to be productive, to, be, uh, to have all of the skills that they need to successfully engage life 
as a, as a mature, responsible member uh, of society and a member of the kingdom. And to get our children from infancy through toddlerhood, through, through the, the elementary and middle school years, as challenging as some of those might be, right into high school and then on to college and then off to adulthood, there is a pattern and a process of discipline. Again, not all of it punitive, but it's a conscious decision and a conscious process, process that we as parents place our children in, put our children through, all with, with a, a passionate heart of love and a desire to see them become the people that God intended them to be. You see, I, I use this process with my children. I have three children, uh, Hannah, who is away at college, Isaiah, who is a senior uh, in high school, and Jeremiah, who's a sophomore. And you know, just for a few examples, I, I used to do the boys' laundry, okay? As they were growing up, did their laundry, faithfully did it, folded it, put it in, in, in closets and in, 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 in drawers and took care of that. I don't do that any longer. These are young men that I'm dealing with now. They do their own laundry. They have to fold their own laundry. That doesn't always happen, but we're working on that. Uh, but it, it is a process. I don't treat them as young men the same way I treated them as young boys in elementary school, as, as developing teens in middle school. They have taken on those disciplines. It wasn't always easy. They didn't always like it. Okay? I used to cover Hannah's living expenses. I did that for her. She is a child growing up. As she was in high school and middle school, we provided the finances for many of the things that she needed to do. And then she got a job and she began to take on more of those responsibilities. She had to pay for some of the things that she wanted to do and some of the things that she enjoyed. But we still continued to provide the basic necessities all the way up until she moved out of the house to go to college. And then even after that, we continued to help her in different ways until at this point with just a year left in college, she basically provides for all of her own living expenses. She covers her own tuition. She works two or three different jobs. She's living on her own and she's learned how to handle those financial obligations and responsibilities. How? Well, we put in a process of discipline. We put in a process of increasingly, you know, stepping back, stepping back a little bit, a little bit more as she was able to take on greater and greater responsibilities. In these and in many other ways, uh, I have done this, as have you who are, who are parents, or if you haven't been parents yet, you've experienced this at some level with your, with your parents doing this in your life, but I've continued to just step back and step back and step back, allowing the children to take on more and more and more responsibilities for their lives as they become uh, teenagers, as they become young adults and move on into adulthood. Discipline is as much about creating an environment for healthy growth and maturity as it is about correction or punishment. And you see, the, the Bible's very clear that God disciplines us. Have you ever heard somebody say this? As a pastor, I have heard this so many times. You know, it used to be so easy for me to get truth and to get revelation out of the Bible. I used to read it and things just seemed to jump off the page at me. Or, or they would say, you know, my prayer times used to be so passionate and it seemed so easy to connect with God. But now, as I read the Bible, I find that i got to put more effort and more, more time into really getting the truth. And things don't come as easy. I don't get it. It's frustrating. Or I, as I pray now, it just seems that I have to push a lot harder to come into God's presence. And there seems to be other things that come against me. And it's, it's just not as easy as it was. Well, yeah, welcome to being a grown-up. Welcome to God's discipline. Welcome to the challenge of having to push harder, take on a greater level of responsibility, press more intently into the things that, that you know will benefit you and that you desire. You see, discipline is not necessarily punitive, but as the writer of Hebrews says, it's, it's never easy. It's always challenging. You know, for those of you that participated in athletics, as I did, it's challenging. All of the preparation, all of the discipline, all of the running, you know, and I, I played football, the tackling, the, the, the drills and the executing the plays, all of that stuff that you do throughout the week for that one moment that you're going to get a chance to do it during the game on the weekend. Discipline is never easy, but when it's done properly, it bears great fruit in our lives. Okay? The writer of Hebrews encouraged us that we should be encouraged by God's discipline because it means we're his children. So how do we endure God's discipline? How do we endure the discipline of maturing? Well, the first one is this. You got to have a goal. You got to have a goal. 
Jerry said this in his message. He said, the purpose of Jesus' life was to show us that it can be done. In fact, he repeated that several different times. In, in verse 2 of, of Hebrews chapter 12, uh, the writer of Hebrews says, because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross. You see, Jesus always had a goal. Jesus was very fixed on his goal, and he understood why he was experiencing uh, all that he was experiencing. In, in Luke chapter 9, verse 51, and I'm, this is from the King James Version, uh, it says, Jesus set his face towards Jerusalem. You see, this was as he was coming, uh, coming from Galilee into Jerusalem uh, for, for, for the Passover feast where he would ultimately be betrayed and then turned over to, to, the, uh, to, the, to the Jewish officials, to the Hebrew officials, and then ultimately over to the Romans and crucified. And Jesus knew or had a sense at least of what was coming. He knew what his destiny was. He knew what God's goal and plan was for him. And yet, in the midst of that, he, the Bible says he set his face, he focused in on the goal for the joy set before him, the, uh, the, the writer of Hebrews says. And you know, it wasn't just Jesus that we see this with either. In Acts chapter 21, uh, the apostle Paul has been on his, his fourth uh, missions journey and he's returning to Jerusalem. And the, uh, there's, a, there's a little bit there in, in verse, uh, towards the end of, of, of chapter 21, where Paul meets with the leaders uh, in Caesarea. And they are encouraging him, no, Paul, don't go, back to, don't go back to Jerusalem. That's a bad decision. You don't need to go there. And it says that Paul was focused on returning back to Jerusalem. He knew what God had called called him to do. He had a specific goal. And in fact, the prophet Agabus comes up and takes his belt off of his waist and ties his own and ties his hands up. And he says, just as the owner, uh, 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 just as I've tied my hands with this belt, so too the owner of this belt will be tied uh, and, and imprisoned. You know, he gives this really uh, negative prophetic word to Paul, but Paul's not swayed. He's focused, he has a goal, and he's ready to endure whatever it takes to accomplish that because he knew what God had called him to do. Even in verse 13 in this chapter, it says, mark out a straight path for your feet. How can you do that if you don't have any idea where you're going? To be able to mark out a straight path, you have to have a goal in mind. You have to have a focus. You know, two weeks ago in his message on clarity, Jerry challenged us to ask God about his purpose and his plan for us. He said, you need to know this. Well, you need to know it because discipline to take you towards that plan is coming. And if you don't have an idea of what the plan is, then how do you expect to engage and work in the discipline? I tell my kids what my goal is for them. I tell my kids why I'm doing the things I'm doing. They don't always like it. And they, frankly, they don't always agree. But they always know where I'm headed with it. Secondly, I want you to understand that discipline equals love. The writer of Hebrews says in verse 6, For the Lord disciplines those he, love, and then lo those he loves. And then he goes on to talk about how, how our earthly fathers have disciplined us and how they loved us and we should embrace and we have embraced their discipline and how much more we should embrace the discipline of our loving Heavenly Father. You see, God, just like, just like an earthly father, is unwilling to have you or me remain the same. If I didn't care about my kids, I wouldn't really care whether they were developing healthy disciplines or not. But because I love my kids, I create situations and circumstances that stretch them, that pressure them, that, that at times they kind of feel under the, under, the, under the pressure of this new and developing situation. But I create those situations because I love them. And God does the exact same for us. It's not always an easy situation for my kids. It's not always an easy situation for me as a parent to watch them have to struggle through a new set of circumstances or challenge. But if I jump out there and help and rescue them every single time and make it easy for them, then I'm not really loving them and I'm not really helping them prepare for what lies ahead in real life. And that's what God does with us. You know, my kids don't always appreciate my effort or my intention, okay? And there's a lot of times that I'm misunderstood. But love is my motivator, just as God's motivator towards us is love. The writer of Hebrew acknowledges this. In verse 11, he says, no discipline is enjoyable while it's happening. Yeah, it's never easy. But, uh, and he says, it's painful. But, he says, and this is the third point, discipline produces a harvest. Verse 11, he says, but afterward there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those uh, who are trained in this way. You see, when we yield ourselves to, 
to God's uh, discipline, when we understand that there's a goal and there's a purpose, and we're focused in on that, and then these challenges and these difficulties come and we press through them, focused on that ultimate goal, all right? We yield ourselves to God pro God's processes. We find that we are equipped and that we are prepared to handle all that life and its, and its many different uh, ups and downs, twists and turns can throw at us. You see, if we've developed the necessary skills through discipline, then we can live at peace because we're making the right choices. We've learned how to function uh, under God's guidance, uh, focused on His goals, uh, dependent upon Him and His mercies. We live at peace. In addition, there's the satisfaction of fulfilling our purpose and God's set plan for our lives. You see, there's a process to successfully enduring the discipline of God. You know, some kids struggle with discipline and they end up trying to get out from under it. Some of them do that successfully, but to their own, their own demise as they are poorly equipped, poorly trained, and poorly prepared to take on the responsibilities of adulthood. You know, and the same thing can happen to us in the spiritual realm. We can weasel out from underneath God's discipline, but we find ourselves poorly prepared to deal with the spiritual realities of the day-to-day -day life in which we live. And that's tragic, and that's not God's intent. And that's why He disciplines us. To be successful at discipline, of, of enduring God's discipline, we got to have a goal. We need to know what God's desiring, or at least the little bit that he's, he's able to show us. Discipline equals love, and we need to understand that God loves us desperately, and so he disciplines us. And finally, discipline produces a harvest, an incredible harvest in our lives that we can then pass on to generations beyond us. You know, there's a few uh, discussion questions that follow this video, and I hope that you'll take some time with your app group to work through those and talk through those. Those are really helpful in taking the things that we've talked about in this video and applying them to our lives. My hope is that you'll do that right now. Again, my name is Lance Stoddart. This is the app group video for Sunday, January 25th. Thanks for being a part of app groups here at Freedom Valley. I enjoyed doing this with you. God bless you.